Hey everyone, welcome to Potential Energy and Connect Energy, working on the chapter of work and energy. So let's look at this first question. An object is sliding on a friction surface below, starting from point B, okay, starting here. At what two points does the object have the most kinetic energy and potential energy? So while we're doing this problem, we can think of it like as a ball rolling through this whole course. And let's look at kinetic energy first. So we should know kinetic energy is equal to one half m v squared. So we should know kinetic energy is dependent on the speed, how fast it's going. So it's going to be going the fastest at point D and point E. A lot of people think, oh, kinetic energy is going to be the most at the lowest points, and which is true mo many times, but it's going to be the most when it's going the fastest, which is many times also at the lowest point. Next point, uh, potential energy. So potential energy, the formula for that is mass times gravity times height. So it's dependent on this height. So we're going to have point B as the highest and point A over here as the highest. Okay. All right, let's look at this next problem. Example one, during a hurricane, a large tree limb with a mass of 22 kilograms and a height of 13.3 meters falls on a roof that is six meters above the ground. Find the kinetic energy of the limb when it reaches the roof. Okay, let's just kind of draw this whole scenario out. So we have this tree, I'm gonna call it this the limb. <laughs> Sorry, the drug is not the best. And then we have the house here. Okay, a large tree limb with a mass of 22 kilograms. So this is 22 kilograms here. And a height of 13.3 meters falls on the roof that is six meters above the ground. Okay, so we know this is gonna be 13.3 meters point and then this is going to be six meters above the ground okay so we know that this is going to be falling this much find the kinetic energy of the limb when it reaches the roof so what i like to do is whatever the lowest point that the object is going to fall i like to put that as the zero line okay so we have to put a reference somewhere for the zero line and i like to put that as the lowest point that the object is going to go. In this case, the object is the limb that's going to be moving. And the lowest point it's going to reach is on top of here. Okay, so I like to make that the zero line. This zero line is important when it comes to the kinetic energy. So key thing we should know, we should know that the mechanical energy is conserved. So when we look at the tree limb, let's do potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So at the very beginning, it has a certain height, so it has potential energy. But at the very beginning, it doesn't move. Uh, it just kind of drops, so that means there's no kinetic energy. At the end here, when it hits this roof, it's going to be at the zero line. So that means it has no height because it reaches the zero line, but it's going to be hitting it with a certain speed. Okay. So the, let's do this. Potential energy initial, which is mgh, is equal to 1 half mv squared. So potential energy, mass is 22. Gravity is 10. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, gravity is 10. And the height, so this is going to be a little bit tricky, but we know from the zero line, this is going to be 7.3 meters. Okay, 7.3. And it's going to be equal to 1 half m, 22, v squared. And now we can say solve it with for velocity and you might have noticed that you could have this is like a free fall problem so you could have used kinematics to try to solve this as well and you would have gotten the same answer um however we are you since we're on the chapter of energy we're going to be using energy. we should get around 12.1 meters per second okay so we get 12.1 meters per second sorry that was the answer for this one here but if we wanted to find the kinetic energy, we know kinetic energy is going to be 1 half mv squared, which is going to be 1 half mass, 22v squared, 12.1 squared. And we get 12.1 squared times 22, 16.06 joules. Okay, I kind of went backwards there, but uh, I think you guys get the idea of how to do Okay, so let's look at this problem, example number two. What is the potential energy, kinetic energy, and total mechanical energy of each point? What is H? So we see point A, point B, point C, point D, and this H here. So we're trying to solve for all of those. We see at the beginning, this roller coaster has a mass of 10 kilograms and velocity of 10 meters per second, and it's a height of 100 meters. So 
There's a few ways we can do this, but personally how I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to find what the potential energy is at the beginning, the kinetic energy is at the beginning, and what our total mechanical energy is. So potential energy, the mass, 10, gravity, 10, height, 100, plus kinetic energy, 1 half, mass, 10, velocity, 10 squared. And let's see what the total uh, mechanical energy is, 10 squared times 10 times 0.5 plus 100 times 10 times 10. And I get 10,500. So what I should know first off is the total mechanical energy at every single one of these points is going to be 10,500 joules. Because we're just assuming there's no friction and no air resistance. So at every single point, the total energy is going to be 10,500 joules. Okay. Uh, so let me see. I'm going to make a chart. I'm going to make a chart A, B, C, and D. And then we're going to do potential energy, kinetic energy, uh, mechanical energy. And what we should know again is everything's going to have 10,500 joules because it never loses any energy if there's no um, friction in any case. Okay, but we know that the height is going to change and the speed are going to change. So let's try to figure out these other things. So for point A, we're at the ground here. So if we're at the ground here, there's zero height. There's zero height, meaning there's going to be zero potential energy. Since potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Uh, I'll put that here. Potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. And there's zero height. That means there's zero potential energy. Next thing is there's going to be kinetic energy and since there's zero potential energy and there's a total of 10,500 mechanical energy, that means the kinetic energy has to be equal to 10,500 joules. Okay, so that's what it equals to. Alright, part B, now there is a certain amount of height. So I'm going to do mass times gravity times height, so 10 times 10 times 30. And this is going to be 3,000 joules. And then we know that this is going to be equal to, uh, and then if the total mechanical energy is 10,500, uh, they ha these two have to equal that. So this is going to be 7,500 joules. And if you see, that's the correct answer. Next part C, uh, again, we're given the height, so 50 meters. So I'm going to do mass, 10, times gravity, 10, times height, 50. And then I find that the potential energy is going to be 5,000 joules. Now I know, okay, if this is equal to mechanical energy, it's 10,500. This has to be 5,500 joules. Oh, kind of on top of each other, but yep. And then part D, we're not given a height. We don't know what it is, but we are given a speed. So what we can do is we can find what this uh, kinetic energy is first. So kinetic energy is equal to... 1 half mb, sorry, mv <laughs> squared. So I'm going to do v squared, 24.5 squared, times the mass, 10, times 1 half, 0.5. And we get this equal to 3,001.25. 3,001.25. And now we can find what the potential energy is by just doing 10,500 minus 3,001. Oh, whoops. And then we get uh, around 7,498.75 joules. Now what we can do is, since we know what the potential energy is, we can find what the height is. So potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. So if we know this is 7,498.75, we know the mass is 10, gravity is 10, and H is unknown. So we could just divide by 10 divide by 10, and we get around 75 meters. Okay. Okay, I hope that made sense. Moving on. Okay, uh, let's guys look at that. Uh, so let's look at this question. Uh, this is the same as the honest question. So if you're looking at the honest question, just try to ignore this mass thing here. But if you're not doing the honest question, then we're not going to so it says a frictionless roller coaster with initial velocity v initial 10 meters per second 
So it begins going 10 meters per second. At initial height of 100 meters, so it's 100 meters. Uh, has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Okay, mass is equal to 1,000 kilograms. And um, you know what? I'm just going to ignore this mass for now because the honors version doesn't have it, but you could keep it if you want to use it. So what is the speed at point A? So one thing we should know is, again, if this is frictionless and there's no air resistance, since it comes back to the same height over here, that means it has the same potential energy, and that means energy isn't going to get lost anywhere, so it's going to have the same kinetic energy. And if it has the same kinetic energy, it's going to have the same speed. So this is still going to be 10 meters per second. You could do the math if you like, but uh, we know it's the same height, so it's going to be the same uh, kinetic energy and everything. What is the speed at point B? So we know that this is going to be equal to 50 meters. So let's figure this out. We're going to do for part B, mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. So we're going to do potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Okay, so let's look at this. We have mass, which we're going to say is unknown, even though you could put 1,000 if you want, but I'm just going to say it's unknown. Gravity, which is 10. Height at the beginning is 100. Plus 1 half mass, we're going to say unknown. And V at the beginning is going 10 meters per second squared. 10 squared is equal to potential energy, mass, gravity, 10. And the final height over here is now 50 meters. So 50 plus 1 half m velocity over here. We don't know what it is. That's what we're looking for. So if you don't know what mass is, if it's not given, one thing you should see is that mass is in every single part of this equation. So if we divide both sides by m, mass cancels out. Okay. Um, if you plugged it in for a thousand, it doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer, but we can just cancel it out because it's in every single part of this equation. Uh, now I'm going to do some algebra, so 10 times 100 plus 0.5 times 10 squared. Uh, so then I get 1050 on this side. And then I guess I'll subtract it by this 500, minus 500, and then times 2. And then the square root of that, and I get 33.17. I'm just going to erase this. Okay, so velocity is equal to 33.17 meters per second. Blah. Okay. Next, how high will it move up on the last hill? So we know this roller coaster is going to go, vroom, vroom, and then it's going to go to the highest point over here. And we want to see how high does it go? What's the highest point you can go? Uh, I'm going to do part C all the way up here. So we're going to do the same thing here. Mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. Uh, potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. However, when it says how high will it move on the last hill? So when it goes to the highest point on the last hill, we should know that the highest it's ever going to go is when the velocity reaches zero. Okay, When it can't move up anymore, it's going to slow down, slow down, and it's going to stop. That means it's going to have a velocity initial of zero at the highest point. Okay, So if it, the velocity is zero at the highest point, that means kinetic energy at the beginning, at the end, is going to be zero. Knowing that, let's plug things in. Math, gravity, 10, height uh, at the beginning is 100 plus one half mass at velocity at the beginning, 10 squared, is equal to mass, gravity, uh, height, We don't, which we're looking for. And since this that's zero, we don't even have to put it. Again, the masses cancel out if you didn't include it. And let's plug things in. 100 times 10 plus uh, 100 times one half, which is 50. And then divide that by 10 and we get height is equal to 105 meters. Oops. Okay, so I hope that made sense to you guys. And uh, if not, watch it again. And uh, it should make sense. But make sure uh, that it makes sense. Okay, moving on.
same thing. This one is just without mask, so hopefully, I uh, I don't want to show it again. <laughs> okay. Uh, last problem. So last problem we're gonna do, I believe. Yep. Okay. So a player hits a baseball with a mass of zero point eight kilograms over the outfield fence. The ball leaves the bat with a speed of thirty six meters per second. Okay. So this ball. 36 meters per second and a fan in the bleachers catches it 0.72 oh, 7.2 meters above the point where it was hit okay 7.2 meters neglect air resistance what is the speed of the ball when caught okay so we want to know what the speed is when it was caught okay so this looks like a projectile motion problem but we actually can't solve it with projectile motion because we don't know the angle but with energy we don't need to know direction so we're good so let's do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. We, I'm going to do potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. And we're going to do mass, which they give us 0.86, gravity 10, height. Uh, so we know at the very beginning, uh, it's at the zero line here. So this is the zero line because it's the lowest point that the object's going to be. So the height is zero. So actually all this goes to zero plus one half mass 0.86 at the very beginning has a speed of 36 meters per second squared. And this is going to be equal to mass 0.86 gravity 10. And it goes 7.2 meters above the zero line. That's where it's caught. So 7.2 plus one half M 0.86 V squared. So we're trying to find that we're trying to find how fast it's caught. Uh, since this is zero, this all goes to zero, and let's kind of simplify this. 36 squared times 0.86 times 0.5, and we get 557.28 is going to be equal to 0.86 times 10 times 7.2, 61.92 plus, and then this is going to be point. 3v squared. So let me just simplify some things. Okay, and at this point, I'm just going to do 557.28 uh, minus 61.92. And then I'm going to divide by 0.43. And what I get is 1152 is equal to v squared. And then I'm going to square root both sides. So square root. And I get velocity is equal to 33.9 meters per second. All right. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Next time, we'll learn more about elastic potential energy along with these two types of energy.